Okay, I'm just going to quickly mock up a fake poster for this so that we can uh, save out the multiple copies. And I'll do a quick mock up of a fake uh, program cover so that we can also save out the copies because I believe that you understand what needs to go on the program cover and the poster. It's pretty explicitly spelled out. If you have any questions, you can uh, shoot me an email. I'll be happy to explain it. But the one confusing part is often how to get the format and the uh, sizes correct. So we're just going to continue from here. Right now we're in an RGB mode uh, and this document is quite large. If we go to image size, uh, let me turn off resample. I'll set this to um, the, yeah, we'll set this to 11 inches. So you can see that uh, it's around 300 pixels or so uh, for the resolution. So just to let you know that, uh, let's go ahead and add some text here so that uh, everything works. We'll just call this electronic music concert. I think that will be a a uh, good way to proceed. Label this. And I think I will do this. I will create a solid color and set that solid color to black. And then I will mask it. So I can adjust this mask however I want. Going to take the same quantum font. And I'm just going to call this electronic music concert. <laughs> I think that will be sufficient. And I would like again to have the same stencil effect going through this. So I will uh, shift click on both of these so they're both selected and create a new group. I will call this group uh, music and I will right click or sorry I will expand it and then right click on the text that says music and go to the uh, blending options and in the blending options I'll do a shallow knockout so we'll go to the bottom of the group and I am going to go ahead and drop the fill opacity all the way down. Uh, don't forget, if you have effects going on in the background, you'll probably need to uh, blend interior effects as a group so that everything will work as you expect. Go ahead and tell it OK. And this is going well. I'll just go ahead and duplicate music. And we'll call this, and I missed, I want to duplicate the music group. And we'll just make this concert. <laughs> Oops, gotta grab the group. So I'm going to do a transformation on both of these with no fear whatsoever because the concert is a vector image and the square is just a mask on the uh, um, color fill. There we go. I'm going to transform the mask. Actually, before I do that, there is one thing I should have done, which is transform the mask first so that it goes out far enough. There we go. And that way I don't have to try to work with this strange rotation that I'm creating. And in this case, I think I will do this. I actually like the black label coming off, so I'm going to leave that alone. But it's really too hard to see here, so I'm not going to do a knockout on this. I am instead just going to make it white text. I don't think that I put the fill opacity back up. Let me do that. There we go. 
So we've got electronic, music, and concert. So I'm going to do something a little bit different here. In fact, I'm going to do this for all of them. I'm going to uh, first move this where I can see it. Whoop, the group. Okay, that's fine. And I'm going to call this concert at the group level. And I'm going to convert this to a smart object. I'm going to convert music to a smart object as well. so that I can do transformations and undo them easily. Even though it doesn't do any damage, I want to be have the option of changing things quickly. Uh, I'm going to go back into the concert. Like I said, I feel as though this worked better uh, when it was not a knockout. So I've got to change that in here. So crank that fill opacity back up and change the knockout to none. Tell it OK, save and close. There we have it. Now that's a smart object, I can do whatever transformations I want, and I can return to the original very easily. And the same is true for the word music. I would like to have this rotated, kind of like black tape. And again, I feel as though it's a little too hard to read with the building going through it, so I'm just going to change this back to white and then change the knockout to none and the fill opacity to 100 percent all right so we've got electronic music concert so so much for a quick fake poster it looks like i'm going to walk it through the whole thing and let's do a couple more things i'm going to come in here and uh, recreate the exact same thing this will no longer be a knockout And this will now be a fill layer, which I need to create a new layer, a new adjustment layer, solid color, black, okay. And I selected this beforehand by control clicking on the layer. So when I created the new fill, it went ahead and um, created mask for me off of that selection there we go but that also means I can do this just add a couple little stripes so we have an electronic music concert but what's the other thing that I need on here well, I need it to have some information. So, for example, uh, in this case, I'm going to put the electronic, the Modesto Junior College Department of Music Presents. I think that will look nice on here. Possibly, but to do that, I'm going to need more space. Let's get rid of these two unnecessary layers. And why not make this a smart object as well? Convert to smart object. Good. Grab everything. Just gonna move it all down. Oh, but the background layer is not willing to be moved down because it's locked. By the way, if you ever need to return something to a background layer, uh, you can do that under layer, background from layer. It's that's layer, new, background from layer. That will convert it back to a background. It's rare that you need to do that, but that's that's available in case I haven't shown you. And one more solid color. Just put that in the background in case we need to move that any further down. We'll be able to. I'm going to go ahead and copy this line of text. Make a new text layer. Paste that in. We can see how uh, that is flying off the page, and also it's underneath everything, so we can't see anything. And also it's the exact same color, which isn't helping us any. So T on the keyboard. Actually, I missed. Since I can't see it, I'm just going to 
double click the uh, icon itself on the text, the thumbnail here. That will select everything and allow me to, I'm just going to switch this back to hue and select black. This is far too large. In fact, I would say that uh, the font itself doesn't lend itself well to this, but maybe not. Let's take a look. No, this is uh, this font's too wide, so I can do all the edits from assignment 14. I'm just going to pick a different font. Uh, let's use the, oh yeah, the arcade font here. And we're going to shrink that down. And I think I'll put this on two lines, perhaps. Oh, well, let's see. Actually, I like that. I think I'll leave that there. Now, uh, I don't think I'll be moving this down. Well, maybe down a little bit more. Cool. All right. So I'm going to uh, squeeze these two things together and uh, make them a smart object as well. In case I need to move it around and create more blue, it will be available for me without any worries. So we've got this, Modesto Junior College uh, Music Department presents Electronic Music Concert. I don't know the name of this particular Electronic Music Concert, so we're gonna leave it at that. I think a couple more lines might look nice, so I'm just gonna pop into the Smart Object by double-clicking on the thumbnail. Notice that I can't just add the lines, so what I'm going to need to do is go to uh, Edit, well actually, I, uh, Image, Canvas Size. I could use the Crop Tool, but I'm just gonna to go to Image, Canvas Size, I'm going to increase the height and the width because why not? Just round these up to two and four inches so that I can actually see what's going on. I'm going to control click on the mask, use the marquee tool to move this up. I want to transform this selection because I don't want to accidentally wiggle it or anything. So I'm going to go to select, transform selection. In this case, hold down the shift key because of the version of Photoshop I'm on so that it uh, is not constrained. And I will mask that out as I drop my pen onto my keyboard. There we go. Grab the marquee tool again, hold down shift so that it slides down correctly and add to the mask. Save and close the smart object. That's pretty cool. I do not like how that's overlapping there, so I'm going to mask the smart object. And I'm just going to take a brush, just like that. And I would like to do the same for concert. So real quick, go into concert, same process. I'm going to go to image canvas size. Again, I'm just going to round both of them. In case I need to do any adjustments. Control click, marquee tool, shift and drag up. Well, here's another way I can do this. Uh, so I'm going to shift and drag it up a bit, but I'm still on the, uh, uh, over this square I've created. I'm going to control alt click, and that will subtract the square out of the uh, uh, other square that we already had, the selection square. That will just give me what I need here. And fill that with uh, black if I were not on the text layer. Gonna move it up first. And move it down. Uh, you know what? There we go. A smidge up. Oops, forgot to turn the text back on. Save and close. We've got that and one more time. I don't want to have that overlap. And save. Okay, we need the additional information here and we need the MJC logo. So before we go much further, let's grab that MJC logo so we can find a good place to put it. I provided the link in the PDF. Just copy that and paste it into your Web browser, it'll come right up. If you don't have the PDF with you, go to the mjc.edu website, type in logos to the search bar at the top left, 
And then one of the first hits there will be uh, MJC logos, go there. We're gonna use a print logo. And I'm going to use the gray logo. I like that one quite a bit. The white logo is uh, also quite nice. Either one's fine. Uh, either TIFF format or the EPS, uh, it will be fine. Either way, you'll need to rasterize it if it's an EPS. It's essentially vectors. Let's just do that one. Do the gray swish. Grab it real quick. Pop on over to a place where you can find it. And then paste that down. So we've got the gray swish. I'm just going to drag it right in here. Here we have the gray swish. Go to transform it. Make sure you constrain it as needed. Now remember I said it has to be at least an inch and a half wide. It shouldn't be warped. So I'm just going to bring it up here for a second. But notice I also have the pop-up box that for some reason I forgot about and went old school on this. Okay. So we got this MJC swish. You can rotate it, just don't transform it. Let's see how it look as a breastplate. I don't like it as a breastplate. There we go. Anywhere we can tuck it away. Nope. So I'm just going to put it right here and call it a day. So that should be a good location for it. It's quite visible, quite readable. It's the required size. Save that. Okay. Time to do a couple more adjustments first. Image canvas size. This actually has to be 8.5. So there we go. Notice we've got this uh, little overlap. So what am I going to do about that? I think I will make a frame. I think I'll have some fun with it. So first, I'm going to move this whole structure over just a little bit. And second, I'm going to take the marquee tool. Actually, I'm going to select all. And I'm going to do a select transform. Select, modify, Actually, it's right here. <laughs> it's like transform selection. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. Notice that uh, I've got it constrained. I'll hold down the Alt key so that it shrinks in towards the middle. Hit Enter. Okay. And I'm going to invert the selection. Control Shift I to inverse the selection. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a solid color. And I think black will be appropriate here. I'm going to tell it okay. But I'm going to have a little bit of fun here. I'm going to toss this in a smart object. Ta-da. Since I had a selection, it has a mask automatically. I'm going to call this frame. And I'm going to have the robot sticking out of the frame. So wherever the robot is, I'm going to mask it. Just like that. Might be a good idea to save if your computer is making horrifying noises. And I'll just call this uh, fifteen booster in progress, so that I know what that file is. All right. Okay, so now the robot sticks out from the frame. Just to make him look a little bit bigger. Okay, <laughs> save. All right, so let's go ahead and throw on the text. Let's see if we can use Blade Runner this time. I liked that font. I'm going to cut this up a bit. Ah, 
that Blade Runner. It's the R. So I'll change the R to Quantum, and the rest will fit. There we go. Actually, let's do the A as well. Make it a capital A. So it'll fit in there. Do that for all the A's. What else might look good? Um, the N's, I think. Needs to be capital though, so it will fit. The M, I think, would look good. And there's another A. That was already capital. I didn't need to change that. And let's see. I think the numbers will look better in quantum. Yeah. It's a little easier to read. All right, that's fun. I like it. Uh, if I wanted to, I could do transformation on these. That might actually be good. Let's bring up the panels. And uh, actually what I need to do is a little slant. So this is where it gets uh, tricky. What might be good is to, because notice that the these are slightly slanted and these are not, I definitely need to uh, correct that. Now there are a bunch of things I could do with the spacing. For example, I could change the kerning here. Which may be sufficient for the A's. And this kerning needs to be increased, but you can see that it really needs to be italicized. So does this come with italics? It does not, so we'll allow Photoshop to create it so that it becomes an italic. This is all the Assignment 14 video stuff, so now you can finally see it in action. I know you've been dying for that. Okay. Missed the R. Kerning looks okay on that. Missed that one. Do, 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 do. Maybe a little less. There we go. Okay. All right, looks pretty good. So let's uh, let's go ahead and do a little bit more to this. I think I like how it's set, so I'm going to go ahead and make it a smart object so that I can play with it a little more freely and return it if I decide I don't like the way that it is. So we've got this cool tape effect I think I will recreate that, but again, have the robot arm be above it. So I want this to be legible from a distance, so I'm going to keep it as large as possible. And uh, time to go into here. And, oops. Control A to select it. Make a solid color tell it okay put it in the back image canvas size got to make it taller make it three inches why not and eight inches why not all right and time to do a transformation There we go. And I would like a thin line again on both sides. Hold down shift key so I can slide it straight down. Okay. And I'm going to close these windows. They're kind of in the way. 
Okay, save and close. So I'm kind of digging it, but you know what? Uh, I think I need the tape to be, this black background to be in its own layer. So I'm going to come in here, control, uh, actually we're going to right click and we're going to duplicate layer back over to our poster in progress document so that I get the whole thing. I'm just going to turn off the eyeball on that. Save and close. So we've got this big black bar. Great. I'm going to uh, toss it in a smart object real quick. Convert to smart object. Oops. And put it below all the text. And let's go ahead and mask it. And oh no, I missed, not a problem. It's a mask. There we go. And save. Okay, so we have a quick mock-up of a poster. Uh, one thing, this I think needs to have a white fill. So I'm gonna do an inner stroke. Color will be white. Ah, uh, unfortunately that's not how this plays. So we're going to do this. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to get rid of the effect. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to convert to a smart object. I'm going to go into that new smart object and I'm just going to take the magic wand tool and I'm going to put on contiguous and select the insides of the letters. It just takes a second of clicking. You got to hit uh, all of them making sure that uh, if anything's split, but it doesn't look like it, you get all the pieces. Then once you go across the entire set of uh, hollow letters, ah, here's a split. Once you go across the entire set of hollow letters, oops, careful not to hit the frame. I'm going to expand the uh, selection a little bit so that it goes into the black. So it has an, an overlap there. Otherwise, I'll have a uh, bit of white space on the anti-alias, and I don't want that. Just like that. So I'm going to go do select and expand. So modify, expand. I'm just going to do five pixels. Perfect. Actually, I'm going to do less than that. Select and modify, expand. You do two pixels even better. I'm going to now create a new solid color. I'm going to make it white, tell it okay. So I've got two choices. I can leave it uh, above or below. And I'm going to put it above and make these kind of fatter, cuter letters out of it that way. All right, close that. And now we've got a much more legible, the Modesto Junior College Music Department presents electronic music concert. And we've got all that good, great, Good to go. So what's left, we're going to, oh, I'm gonna move this logo a little bit. We're going to save out a bunch of different versions of this thing. So we'll do that in the next video. I'll see you all in just a minute.